very few teams who will be capable of beating Clare on June 3rd. I just hope that we are one of them. The Clare champion, meanwhile, outlines the reasons it will be tough for Clare. Cyril Lyons heading into the cauldron that will be Porky Keeve, says the caption. People are fearing the worst for the future, says Joe Amurherthy in another piece. But on the other hand, they also discover from their own straw poll that the experts favour Clare. Well, the issue is settled in Chewham, but the tussle is only about to begin in the south, where Tip and Clare go head to head for a place in the Munster final. Gerlock Nan, a man who knows plenty about these encounters, as a player and indeed as a manager, he joins us in studio. And so too does Offaly's former All-Ireland and GA All-Star, Michael Dyglin. Gentlemen, you're both very welcome. Michael, nice to have you on the Sunday game. Thanks, so, I'm sure you're looking forward to the Munster Championship. Harding, who's going to win it though? Well, I don't know at this stage. Um, I have a slight inkling that Tipperary might do it, but I'm really looking forward as a neutral to it. I think what will be one of the games of maybe the last number of years. Yeah. There's a huge amount at stake today, and I'm really looking forward to the game. Joe Lucknell, you can't look at it as a neutral for obvious reasons. Are you nervous about it? Well, uh, I, definitely not a neutral anyway, but uh, now I know what supporters feel like going to games. <laughs> And I can only imagine what it's like in the dressing room right now down, yeah. down in Parky Keeve. You know, that fierce determination that Clare have going out into the field. Funny thing, all the week, the players are very, very confident. They feel they're really up for it. This is going to be a defining moment for Clare Hurling. Yeah. I, I think if they stand up today and if they win today, there's a new buzz about Clare Hurling. If they're beaten today, the future will look very bleak. Yeah. For Tip, it'll only put them back a year. But for both teams, there's a massive amount at stake. Oh, that's the beauty of championship, isn't it? Now, we've asked Chair, in fact, first to focus his attention on the tip team and discuss with us the roles of one or two of their key players. Well, this is the main stumbling block to Clare today in the defence. Eamon Corkin, a superb player, twice player of the year in the Fitzgibbon Cup. Brilliant in the air, as you see there. But what's even better is, when he gets the ball, how fast he can drive it forward. The long ball here that led to the goal that Tipperary got last year, controversial and all as that goal was. And here he is again. Now, this is where Clare have to stop him. Moving forward with the ball, setting up great attacks, and delivering great ball to the inside forwards, either a pass or a low ball. Now, Eddie Enright here is a man that most typifies uh, Tip's new way of, play of playing. Centre forward, but here he is out near the wing. Ball off his left-hand side over the bar. One minute at the left wing, the next minute now you'll see him coming over at this side of the field here, appearing up out of nowhere, ball with his right hand side this time over the bar. He can hit it left or right, a very sharp striker, a tireless worker. Another ball here from his right hand side over the bar. He's a tireless worker moving all over the place and Shawnee McMahon has his work really cut out to keep an eye on him today because he'll drag Shawnee all over the field. Yeah. Those are two huge clashes today. And they certainly are. Well, that's Jer's view of the tip side of things. Now, we've also asked Michael Dyglin to run the rule over the Clare team and who he thinks will be the key men for them today. Well, not surprisingly, perhaps, he has identified two stalwarts as the men who need to turn it on for the banner. <laughs> Yeah, we have Shawnee McMahon, to me, possibly the, one of the best horrors over the last 20 years that I certainly have seen. Here you see him in the air, the strength, makes room for himself and a simple stroke. And here you are again in the air, massive catch, away with the ball, great athlete, knew he was going to be hooked and then flicked it away up the field. Can you watch him here now in defence? This is his great strength. Look at his physical strength. Burst out past John Lally, who's no weakling, makes room for himself and clears the ball 80 yards up the field. And here's the other dimension to Shawnee. 65 metre freeze, maybe even longer, 80, 90 yards. He scores maybe 3, 4, 5 in every game. Massive player and, you know, he has been injured. Jamesy O'Connor, again a, a legend, another door bear for the man. Watch Jamesy here now. One, two, quick look around, scores on, flick over the bar. Little short backswing, impossible to hook, 50 yards out over the bar. Again, Jamesy running with the ball effortlessly, look. Six, 55, 60 yards out, straight over the bar. And Jamesy's going to do this all day. Here you see him winning the ball in the air, brave man, no fear in him whatsoever. One quick look over the bar again. Absolutely impossible to mark, I think, Jamesy, but He'll, you know, if he's on Eamon Cork and he'll have his hands full, he's central to the game. Well, he certainly will. That's the view of our panel. Thank you, gentlemen, for the moment. So the scene is set then for the action that's going to happen down in Porky Key. Let's go over there now and join our commentary team. Sarah Farrell, I'm sure, is looking forward to it, and so is Joe Canning. Absolutely, and it is, uh, it's an absolutely beautiful afternoon here at Porky Cueve. Sunshine all day long in the Cork area, and a capacity crowd as you can gather here. And uh, that would mean round about 42, 43,000 people for a much... Uh, a match that was much looked forward to. Let's uh, take a check on the teams then. Well, the big absentee factor for Clare is their wing-backs. Throughout the 90s, between them, they had played in 60 championship games. 
Liam Doyle and Clare's most successful captain ever, Anthony Daly, are replaced by David Hoey and Jerry Quinn. Tullo's Brian Quinn is back at cornerback, while Shawnee McMahon returns to centre-half. No change at midfield, where the uh, play is likely to be intense as ever. Of course, it's Baker and Lynch in there. In the forwards, Tony Carmody comes in at number 10. Alan Markham moves to the left wing. And it's an inside forward line led by Niall Gilligan, an all-star two years ago. Of course, I feel I should be asking Chair Lockdown, is that the correct team? <laughs> Tipperary begin this afternoon with nine of the starting 15 from 12 months ago. The Premier County won that match by a goal and five points. Man of the match from the league final, Brendan Cummins, is in goal. Philip Maher, who made his debut against Waterford last year, is the fullback. John Carroll is back at right half with Eamon Corcoran in the centre. It's uh, once again Conor Gleeson and Tommy Dunn at midfield. And in the forwards, Declan Ryan is by far and away the most experienced player, having first played in the championship all of 13 years ago. Then he was lining up with the likes of Pat Fox and Nicky English. Today it's Owen Kelly and Lar Corbett. Those are the two teams, no changes as they were selected. Lots of speculation, the Castle Lions pipe band leading the way around here. Match coming up in about four minutes time after the commercial break. Which I've noticed is that Brendan Cummins has been told to swap his goalkeeping shirt because it was the identical colours of the Clare players more or less. And I think Nicky English might feel that Davy Fitzgerald should change his as well, as it's very similar to the tip colours. A bit confusing at times when these two teams play, Cyril. Yeah. And Davy Fitzgerald has been told by Dickie Murphy, the referee, I think, that he's got to change his jersey also. Louis Mulqueen, one of the selectors, is in there to make that change. Dickie, who also took charge of the 1997 famous All-Ireland final between the same two counties. In fact, uh, David Fitzgerald has taken a towel with him rather than a jersey. It seems to be a towel, maybe it's not. Well, we're having a good look at it here. I think it is a jersey, in fact, so maybe he will have to change. It's Clare who won the toss. They play with a slight breeze behind them for the first half. First of all, there's going to be a minute's silence, and that is in memory of a man who died yesterday, Val Dorgan, very distinguished journalist, member of the Glen Rovers Club, won an All-Ireland minor medal as a fine player. And sadly, he has passed away. Er yeshte gurev anam dilish. switched across instantly and he's marking Lar Corbett Dickie Murphy from Wexford wants to get the match underway just after 4.20 whoever loses here is out of the championship and that's going to be a free referee just indicating that he's giving the free this way to Clare on the left hand side and it'll be Sean McMahon who will take it right in the middle of the field 
McMahon playing today in his 27th championship match. So far he scored 48 championship points. A huge tally for a centre half back. But what about this first strike? What about this for a start? And clear lead. A huge distance out. A light breeze behind him, but it's a great start by Clare. Plenty of action, Gerald, on and off the ball. Dickie will have to get this sorted out early on because they're getting to know one another already. Jerry Quinn, I think, and Mark O'Leary, the players involved. He's going across and going down is Mark O'Leary. I think there was a blow there, and I think it was Jerry Quinn who struck Mark O'Leary. Yeah, both of them, Gerald, pulled that one out of the at it since the, before the throw in. Uh, Dickie was slow enough letting that ball in. There was plenty of action before he let it in, and I'd say Mark is going to have attention on his fingers. Dr. Jerry O'Sullivan there attending to Mark. Mark O'Leary from the Kilroan McDonough's Club. Well, it's a very fiery start. And there is a yellow card for both players. Well, let's hope Dickie Murphy can stamp it out right now. This puck out to be taken by Brendan Cummins. Man of the match in the league final just four weeks ago. Runs on here very well. Possibilities. That's Brian O'Mara. Stopped. Claire managed to get it back. It's Frank Lowe on this time. Big clearance. Stopped over there by Paul Kelly, 22 years of age. And Brian Long, just making sure this one doesn't cause any danger to his own backline. Up towards Colin Lynch this time, against Conor Gleeson in midfield. Seized upon once again by Eamon Corcoran. Nice ball down here for Owen Kelly. Kelly looking at the and he puts it over the back. It's a fine start. Good answer, Joe, and Eamon Corcoran already has cleared clear out two very good thoughts at centre-back. Two very young corner forwards there. Kelly is 19, Lark Corbett is 20. It was Kelly who took it. He was given far too much room over there by Frank Lowen, and he knocked it over the bar. Colin Lynch contesting in midfield. That's Alan Markham. Trying to take possession there was Tommy Dunn. Stalemate situation. Comes back out towards Jamesy. Jamesy O'Connor's attempted pass blocked down. John Carroll, the All-Star, came off the Clare player. And uh, Jamesy is winded. He felt the, felt the full effects, I think, of that clearance. Colin Flynn there just giving him some attention. Sir Lyons is there as well. Let's see just what happened here. Jamesy was attempting the hand pass. John Carroll was coming in, intercepted. And as the clearance was coming, oh, it was the stick, in fact. It was completely accidental. No place for the faint-hearted out here today, John. Absolutely not. Line ball for Tipperary. James is back in the action. Eddie Enright can't claim it. Instead, it's Owen Kelly, stopped by Frank Lowen. At least momentarily. Brian Lowen gets it away. Tommy Dunn, ooh, high challenges. It was Tommy Dunn there, and uh, Colin Lynch... Referee whistling up and giving the free to uh, Tipperary. This is what happened, this is the reason why. Tommy Dunn, by his uh, own admission, hasn't been having the very best of seasons, but he's led Tipperary to two league titles in recent years. But he wants a championship medal, and he's put it over. A couple of very well executed frees here, and it's two points to one. So Davy Fitzgerald in the changed jersey. You'd wonder why all that wasn't sorted out before the match. Comes back down here once more. Markham trying to take possession here. He gets the pass from Colin Lynch. Instead, Lynch firing it in. Stopped in there well by Brendan Cummins. Very capable goalkeeper, his sixth championship season. Oof. Tommy Dunn going in and uh, he's fouled by Jerry Quinn. We'll have to be careful, he's already had his name taken. 
Colin Lynch also been spoken to by the referee and there may be a blood injury he'll have to leave the field to play if the referee decides Colin Flynn so straight away there is a substitution they were going to bring Markham back into the half-back line instead they're bringing in Enda Flannery very much a utility player good idea to have a utility player I think in your side nowadays for such an incident that's in towards Declan Ryan got a goal and a point in the league final coming in there was Corbett and that has gone wide it's fast and it's furious yeah Ger, it's fast and furious just hasn't settled down yet Colin Lynch has gone off to get that uh, blood cleaned up he'll be back on again and in the final will hold until he comes uh, Tipperary will be, be happy that the young fellas so far have lived in the, in the heat of battle and that was Larkov but one of the uh, young fellows trying to get in to profit by the knockdown so many young players playing in today's match Davy Fitzgerald end of Flannery up underneath this one great catch back towards Jerry Quinn once again played last year in corner forward that's in towards Nine Gidigan trying to cause some problems inside there Philip Maher on his knees and uh, the referee I think is going to throw the ball in the two Claire, Claire players prepared to go in and contest that one again there's a real pile up and the referee I think will have to repeat the dose speaking there with John Carroll this time he wants the other players back a fair distance and uh, that time the foul was on Eamon Corcoran and it's a free to Tipperary it was a wild and dangerous pull Conor Lynch is coming back in referee says back with the action you come end the flannel he goes back off that's not of course counted nowadays as one of the five official substitutes that you make in a game so this will be taken by Eamon Corcoran from the JK Brackens club center half back good ball Eddie Enright it's going just to the right I think or is it over Clara protesting from here from here is Eric was a tight one look at that again I must say I was right behind the flight of the ball here this angle may not be as good as the earlier one the point was given and it's three points to one I thought it was just wide Connor Gleeson that comes back to Ollie Baker they're looking for a much better performance from Baker this afternoon up to Gilligan this time and the referee says he was fouled by Philip Marr too much fouling going on in the game so far so Claire once again bring on Colum Flynn here to attend to the injured player there was Niall Gilligan down he went Philip Maher was chasing after him the referee's whistle sounded he saw something and it said it's a free in to the banner A game still in which the players are trying to find their rhythm. And that's James e. O'Connor putting it over the bar. James e. from the St. Joseph's Dura Bearfield Club, just outside Ennis. His first point. That was his first free as well, and it's three points to two. It's as close as we expected. Ollie Baker going backwards, trying to bat it, needing Sean McMahon to come across. Eddie Enright's chasing. Up into the corner. Great catch this time. David Ford on his left-hand side, looking for the equaliser. The umpires look at it and they decide, yes, it's over the bar. David Ford, first chance to impress in this match, putting it beautifully over there. Yeah, very great catch, Gerard, onto his good left side, straight over the bar. First one for, from play for Clare scored 1-1 of course last year in the corresponding game against Tipperary looking for another bumper harvest pressure now on the Clare backs Eddie Enright and that has gone wide 
You could see the sun was in the umpire's eyes that time. They had to go back and try to shield the sun from the rise to make absolutely sure. Good chance for Enright that time. Yeah, it's one yard that he should have. He was gone clear. He had plenty of time. He could look and have, you know, make sure, but he just put it wide. John Carroll against Markham. Back down again by Conor Gleeson. Mark O'Leary was there. Sean McMahon. Eddie Enright has broken his stick. Good ball inside, but uh, the goalkeeper is needed to come and assist the fullback. This time the pressure is over there on David Howey. Tip, and in particular Brian Amara, judged to have been dragging back the opponent. And it's yeah. going to be a free for Clare. Ref is right there, Jerry was pulling before the ball came. He had an arm on him as well. Sean McMahon to hit this one. One point from a huge free already. Crowd going strangely silent. He's given it everything that he's got, but he's put it wide this time. One out of two so far. So the running repair has been carried out by Niall Gilligan, man they call Gilly. Huge puck out. Frank Lowen came to meet it. Here's Colin Lynch, stopped over there by Owen Kelly. Three clear men trying to get it up onto their sticks and it just won't come up for them. And that's another foul and it's another three and this time it's going to be to Clare. Just a period of uncertainty there when this ball wouldn't rise kindly for Ollie Baker. And in the end that was a frontal charge the referee determines by Tommy Dunn. McMahon to take it, inside his own 65 metre line, again it's a really big one, and it drops down off the post this time, and comes away to safety, out by Paul Ormond, that is David Hoy, inside once again towards Sal Gilligan, but it runs on instead to Brendan Cummins, secure goalkeeping, Baker trying to deny Conor Gleeson, colleagues in Templemore in the old days when they played Fitzgibbon Cup hurling, but this time it goes wide off the stick of Alan Markham. That's sure. going to be a good contest, Cyril, there between John Carroll and Alan Markham. Yeah, it's tough. Carroll likes to come forward, Markham likes to go through. With that to me, shot a bit fast. The game hasn't fully settled down yet, but Clare are making it as hot as they can within the rules. Baker and Gleeson. Good contest. Tony Carmody, big man, runs on towards David Ford. Paul Ormond's after him. Ford once again. Starting to try and pop it inside into the middle. And hope for the best. Gilligan's trying to get it up onto his stick once again. Philip Mars after him. They're all after him. Mar gets the block and it comes out towards Mark O'Leary. Down towards Owen Kelly. McMahon was uh, lashing across that one there and the shoulder is by Baker and the Tiff fans will feel they might have had a free there the pressure now is on Brian Quinn Lark Corbett looking to try and get his first chance of this match Quinn doggedly sticking to his task and in the end it goes out off the Tipperary man and it's going to be a clear sideline ball and all that in spite of the protests of Declan Ryan this was a great block down there wonderful courage and great skill Eamon Corcoran, man with the gold helmet in there, needing the assistance of Paul Kelly. Sean McMahon, that's a great catch. Great skill by Sean McMahon. Enright will have to try and tie him back somehow. This is good play again by the fullback. Had a rough time in the match against Waterford last year when Ken McGrath got three points off him early on. Let's hope the game does settle down now a little more. And we'll see what they really can produce, like Brian O'Mara here, fouled, and it's going to be a free for Tipperary. Far too many frees. Just a while ago there, Ger Owen Kelly came through two very hard tackles, one from McMahon, he got another one as well. He stood up to them well, I'd say Tip Crowd would feel that he definitely should have got a free, but he stood up to them well, and he's proven himself in Championship Hurling. 
Well, that's what it's all about. And here comes young Owen Kelly. Got five points in the league final. A couple of those were from Freeze. This is just outside the 45-meter line. Well within his range. And he's put it over the bar. That's Owen Kelly's second score now. One from play, one from a free. Marked this afternoon by Frank Lowe and has tip lead by four points to three. It could be another very tight contest here at Porky Cueve. Mark O'Leary pursued by Jerry Quinn. Baker getting it in. James who tried to steal that one away from Eamon Corcoran. Markham's hand pass running just too far. Great block down there. That's Barry Murphy trying to get into the match here for Clare. Having to come very deep. Jerry Quinn. Getting it inside here to Tony Carmody. The big man hitting it off his left-hand side, but he's put it wide. Three wides now for Clare in this match. This was, again, the good work done in there with Tommy Dunn. Very much involved, Nicky English in the background. We've been mentioning what a huge occasion it is. Whoever loses can say goodbye to the championship for 2001. Sean McMahon, another great catch. Enright tried to deny him, but he's not getting on top of Sean McMahon this afternoon so far. This one pops out here to Eamon Corcoran. It comes back to James O'Connor from Alan Markham. Beating the attempted block and putting it on target and putting it over. James O'Connor now with two points. A fascinating contest in prospect and it's four each level for the third time. That's a great score, Jericho's because under pressure because at the moment Eamon Corcoran would, do, would have to say he's having the better of the duel but James is picking up any little breaks and doing well in it. This was a wonderful catch here. That's two in a row now for Sean McMahon. You'd have to wonder, Gerard, why Brendan Cummins is actually poking the ball right down on top of Sean McMahon and Eddie Enright, because Sean has been collecting them high in the air. Let's see if there's going to be a change where that particular practice is concerned. Meanwhile, Clare have a sideline ball, and Frank Lowen from the Wolf Tones Club in Shannon about to hit it. Didn't make a good connection, but he might get another chance. Or well, would they leave it to Jerry Quinn instead? Pressure in there. That's Tomas Costello, the number two. Up towards Barry Murphy. Runs in beyond him this time. And there's some holding, and it's going to be a free end. They play away. Murphy would have hoped for his goal chance didn't connect properly with it anyway but it is going to be a free a free into Clare and James e. O'Connor to take it it really is a very very hot afternoon in Cork and you can see the bottle, the bottle uh, men on the sideline throwing in as much water as possible just to keep the players temperatures down steaming hot day James e. O'Connor to hit this one. Looking to put Clare in front. He's done it. Three points for James e. O'Connor and Clare lead by five points to four. It really is though a very, very even contest. Two great rivals. Ollie Baker misses it completely. Up it comes here to Lar Corbett. And passing it over towards the other young player, that is Owen Kelly, fumbled somewhat. Mark O'Leary trying to step in. Couldn't come up into a stick, and a few players are having difficulty getting the ball on the sticks this afternoon from the ground. There's Eddie Enright. And he'll feel an awful lot better after that one. Leveling up the match. His first point after Sean McMahon had been really on top in that particular individual duel. He sure will feel happy, Joe, because he wasn't coming out on top, but the last puck out, he didn't go for the stead back and let the others do the donkey work for a change. 
This time the puck out is for Davy Fitzgerald. Runs across here to Connor Gleeson. Brian Quinn going back, being secure. Colin Lynch getting the encouragement from the fans. Good stroke towards Barry Murphy, but he is uh, struggling to get on top in his duel there with Tomas Costello. They concede the uh, free. Free to Tipperary, and the referee wants the ball back in the correct position. This is the 44th ever championship meeting between these uh, great rivals. And this was where Costello was coming out and Murphy was clearly fouling. John Carroll here from the Ross, Clip, uh, Ross Cray Club. Towards Lar Corbett, again Quinn bats it away. They were in difficulty in the corner there the last day, Claire. This, day, this time there's a foul and this time it's going to be a free out for Claire. A frantic uh, chase over there, but there was a push in the back quite clearly by Brian O'Mara. Davy Fitzgerald. Doesn't quite happen for Eamon Corker in there. He missed it. Ormond's out to try and help. And the end, it is Philip Marr playing well at full back. Oh, Kelly there and Frank Lowen. And the referee decides that Frank Lowen was pulling dangerously. Tip have got themselves afraid. There was a push in the back as well. Declan Ryan and, and Brian Lowe are not happening in there yet, Chair. It's about time they dropped one shot in around them. Let's see if Tommy Dunn will decide to do that or go for a point from this free. He's 65 metres out. He's trying to pick out Declan Ryan this time and Lowen tries to scoop it out, just does enough to get it away. Claire still under pressure over. Lark but the left corner forward, across here towards Eddie Enright. He's got two points in the match so far. Ollie Baker back to help out, right on the end line. Oh, great knockdown. Declan Ryan was the one who made the block, and it was Quinn who made the clearance. Up towards Jamesy O'Connor. Tip, launch another attack. Low and under pressure, and he took it very strongly there. Very committed play, looked very dominant. Tommy Dunn, Jamesy O'Connor. This time it comes back here to Jerry Quinn. Gilligan misses. They need Paul Orman to come and assist. Left corner back. Flicked on this time. And that's going to be a temporary ball. So far, Joe. Both left backs are having good games. Paul Kelly from Tipperary and Jerry Quinn from Clare. What you guys really playing quite well. What about that block there by Declan Ryan? Absolutely brilliant. Tommy Dunn this time playing it infield it's missed by Ollie Baker this time David Howey put under pressure and that's the new man Tony Carmody Eamon Corcoran trying to get away from the would-be tackles scooped forward this time by the left corner left half back Jerry Quinn Back in again by Paul Kelly this time for Tipperary. Once again, it's David Howey. who's had a great couple of years with uh, his club, St. Joseph's Dura Airfield. Pressure once again on the Tipperary backs as David Ford was trying to get into uh, a scoring opportunity. He's given it. Here is a great chance and it's a great save. Colin Lynch absolutely cursing his luck but what about that wonderful save by Brendan Commons he had three great saves by my reckoning in the league final and this was another magnificent one here yeah great save Joe he's not really the best goalie in Ireland for nothing you know fantastic save I suppose Lynch and Clare might be saying he could have tapped over he had to go for broke really a goal would have been a great fill up to Clare they still have the 65 to come back man to take it Nicky English will be grateful for the fact that he's got a goalkeeper with a big, big frame who can spread himself so well. Lynch must have thought he was going to at least get a point, not with Cummins about. 
Sean McMahon, point from a very long range free earlier on. This, the 65 for Clare, and that is over the bar. Alan Lynch has indicated he didn't get the goal, but he got the point, so he feels safe. Little piece of history for uh, Sean McMahon there, that is his 50th championship point, and Clare lead. But when you've got a huge free taker like Sean McMahon about, it gives you uh, an added plus, surely, every time you go into battle. Always good for about three or four points. And also a wonderful leader of the half-back line. It's an inexperienced half-back line we mentioned earlier, except for Sean McMahon. James O'Connor getting a little block on that one. And Tony Carmody takes it forward. The hand pass to space towards David Ford. Two players alongside him. They go with another hand pass. They've done this several times in this match. James O'Connor driving it in. But Gilligan couldn't reach it. And it comes out to John Carroll. The All-Star getting it down. Stopped by Colin Lynch. Into Alan Markham. There's a point for the taking here. And he's put it wide. Some... Pretty good chances now, been missed by Clare in this match. This was that uh, Paul Kelly attempted clearance and the hook by James O'Connor. Markham will feel, Jared, that he should have scored there. But usually, Jared, it's a very low scoring game, six points to five. Well, Clare will feel a little bit uh, happier, not quite 27 minutes uh, gone so far. But that is put over by Tommy Dunn. His second point of the match, but the first to come from play, and he's tied it at six points apiece. Doubts about Tommy Jarrett coming into the game, but no ill effects there today. There were all kinds of rumours, in fact, that he mightn't start this match, or that John Lahey might be in instead, but they've gone for the team they picked. Brendan Cummins put under pressure, tripped as he was coming out, that's a free to Tipperary. Well, we've still got about seven and a half minutes of the first half still to play. Well, that was some save that Brendan Cummins made just a few minutes ago. Really brilliant. Brian Quinn put under pressure by Lar Corbett. Lar has been kept very quiet so far by Quinn. They tried to get that ball out. Here comes Kelly, inside towards Enright, looking for another score. Might have hit it first time without taking it into his hand, going through again. And it's put wide by Owen Kelly. And another little bout of unpleasantness here. But I thought that Enright had the chance, but he opted to take it into the hand. He might have hit it first time. Jerry, I think he was going to go right, and then he came back to his left, and he's going in around danger zone there. Now, young Kelly met it first time here. You couldn't blame him, really. He was rightly what he did. But the clear backs are making it as hot as possible in there. The decibel level rises once again. Intense action. Teams level. And that was Brian O'Mara, who seems to have switched across to this right-hand side. At the moment as well, Jerry. Gilligan is now corner forward and Barry Murphy's gone in full. Well, Gilligan was getting very little of the ball. But neither Gilligan nor Barry Murphy made much of an impression in the opening half an hour of this match or thereabouts. Likewise, from a temporary point of view, they'll be worried that they didn't get the ball in to the likes of Declan Ryan a bit more. This is what happened here. Lynch fouled, free to Clare. So another scoring chance for Clare and for Sean McMahon. And that one is just inside the left-hand post. But he's on sound, Joe. This guy is unreal. He's a great talent to have in there at centre half back, and he's holding the half back line together there of David Howey and Jerry Quinn. This time Lark Corbett beats Quinn to it. And Lark Corbett has his chance and he's put it over. First real chance to shine in this match. He was being well marshalled, but he's made it seven points apiece. It's turned into a fascinating contest and the teams are now level. 
for the sixth time. This was Corbett, did well to take it away from the attentions of Brian Quinn. Pressure once again on the tip backs. They're missing David Kennedy, of course, a long-term in injury. Probably would have been playing at centre-half back had he been fit. It's going to be Eamon Corcoran, who's moved in from the wing into centre-half, will take this free. That was Tommy Dunn just moments ago there. Up towards Declan Ryan this time, it's a good catch, or he's lifted down. Just for a moment, I thought he was going to set something up, he has a chance here. And across there came Frank Lowen. A well-timed tackle, because Declan Ryan could only shake the head. This was Frank Lowen going across. Well, did he foul him? But before even Declan got the ball, it's a terrible sun there, a lot of lads are getting on sight so it's a good hard tackle. Most people would think it's a free in. Broken down here by Connor Gleeson. Sean McMahon against Eddie Enright. Team's level heading towards the half-time break. David Ford belted inside here. And uh, the linesman has been waving his flag over there. And it's going to be, I think, Tipperary's ball. And they're bringing across Paul Orman to take it. Linesman this afternoon here are Pat Ahern from Carlo and Pat Dunphy from Kilkenny. James e. O'Connor trying to dig that one out of there. Rolled up beautifully this time. Hit towards Gilligan in the corner against Tomas Costello, making a better angle for himself, and he's put it wide after all of that. Not on song so far, a clear of five whites. Well, he made the angle for himself by moving outside at the 20-meter line, then back in again. Brendan Cummins today playing in his 19th championship match. There's one minute of added time to be played at the end of the first half. So, we have about another three, four minutes to play, I suppose. Well, three at least. Frank Lowen, about to be pressurised here by Owen Kelly. Kelly slips. Lowen, linking up with Sean McMahon, the indestructible centre-half back, and he's forced out over the sideline by the persistence of Owen Kelly, and it's a line ball to Tipperary. Young Kelly will feel happy about that, for pressure on this is a fast line ball. And ball taken very, very quickly, back to Sean McMahon, it comes once again. Clare trying to launch what would be their 19th attack in this match. They've 18 scoring chances. Tipperary with 11 scoring chances. Alan Markham has yet to score. But when you look through the Clare forward line this afternoon, David Ford with one point, James e. O'Connor with three, and you've got four players in that forward line yet to score. They've been heavily dependent on Sean McMahon's long-range freeze. Hit in there by Tomas Costello from Kappa White. Alan Markham. David Ford. And it's Philip Maru who gathers it up there, makes the clearance. Baker not shining in midfield so far. Here's Colin Lynch. Has support outside through Baker. Against Conor Gleeson. James e. O'Connor can't hold on to it. It skids in the surface here. There is support, however. The man on the corner, Paul Ormond. O'Mara. And that's whipped back in there once again by Jerry Quinn of Clare. James e. O'Connor getting it on there towards Tony Carmody. Here's Colin Lynch doing a lot of spade work in midfield. Here he comes again. Tearing through here. Tommy Dunn's after him. Good plan, hand pass ahead towards Billigan. Just went too far ahead. Philip Marr, shoulder. Getting it away downfield. The match is in injury time. There'll be another 55 seconds or thereabouts to play. It's going to be a free for Clare. 
still level seven points each and it's tense Nicky English and of course Ken Hogan there as well alongside Jack Bergen tip selectors a lot of pressure on them Sean McMahon three points from six frees so far in this game a very high ratio and when you consider the distances he's hitting from again from the middle of the field slightly left and this one has gone slightly left only about 15 seconds to play nothing to separate these teams remember that Clare have had a slight breeze behind them for the first 35 minutes this is the fullback coming out here just moments ago as the whistle goes in Porky Creek Mars clearance there a beauty some good hurling some bit patchy as well it's been intense and we've got Sean McMahon on three points all of them from freeze and nothing to separate the teams as they go in at Porky Cueve for the half-time break of 15 minutes duration and at half-time it is Tipperary seven points Clare seven points let's go down to Finney Muckaboard Ken uh, any worries about the first half first half is a very tight tough game uh, I think it was real championship play the first five minutes was very tough uh, I think it's opened up a little bit now but it's very close tight scoring game do you see any changes at half time there we'll have to consider changes but I haven't said that uh, it's even Stephen at this stage and we're not going to panic yet and how do you think it'll go to, do you think we'll go down to the wire oh of course this is a championship game it's a monster championship and it will go down to the wire it's going to be very tough Ken thanks very much okay. thanks wire won't it it sure will uh, Claire's tactics are absolutely ideal here mm. They're tackling, blocking, hooking, denying temporary space. Every ball is contested with de demonic ferocity. And that is the tactic you have to play against Tipperary. Now, the great thing for Clare is Sean is back to his very, very best. The new players are playing magnificent. And above all, Colin Lynch is having a great game in midfield. But the most important thing is the tip half back line are clearing no good ball. Yeah. James E. Markham, they're really fighting for every ball, getting it through. Our full forward line are not doing the business. Our backs are fantastic. No ball has gone into the careful back line hardly yet. Yeah. We are really in this game. It's set up for a brilliant second half. Michael Dignan, you've watched your first Munster uh, Championship match. As an analyst on the Sunday game, you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it um, to an extent. It's been very, very tense. I thought that maybe after about 20 minutes the game Michael, would have settled down. Yeah. But it hasn't settled at all. Um, Clare have only scored two points from play, which I think will be a big worry to them. Yeah. Uh, only James is the only one of their... Actually, James and Davy Ford got a point each. Mm -hmm. uh, Tip have five points from play. I think the difference is Tipperary aren't playing well. Tip have, or Clare have most of the possession, but Tipperary are making more use of their possession. The game is very stop-start. One thing that I find about, there's no ground hurling. Yeah. Uh, very, very little, and there's no space. There's no space out there. If they move the ball on the ground, it'd make more space for the full forward lines. And because of that, you know, the forwards, I think the full forwards are getting poor supply. So, all to play for in the second half. Oh, certainly is all to play for. There's no doubt about that. Seven points apiece. We pick up more analysis after the commercial break. Michal Clare. Nice catch by Cyril Lyons. Cross towards the unmarked man on the far side of the field, Michael Guilfoyle. Here's Jerry McInerney. It's a goal! Oh, the level! Dramatic way to end this Munster Championship semi final. Yeah, fantastic score. That's from another day between Clare and Tip. This is the situation in today's match at half time. As Michael Dignan said, uh, very few scores in that first half of it, indicating how tight and tense that it is. Eight free show, I suppose, the intensity of this game and why it is so tight and why it is so tense and the scores are so low. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you see Niall Gilligan, I think, yeah, Niall Gilligan here comes onto the ball has a bit of trouble getting it up, now he turns, absolutely brilliant block down for Philip Marr here, who's having an outstanding game for Tipperary, ball cleared down by Mark O'Leary, now young Owen Kelly now comes out, and when Shawnee comes across a very heavy tackle, Ali Baker lets him know he's mm. there as well, and you know, Owen Kelly's a young pair, and he sent the ball in, but I wondered, I wondered about how that would affect him, but actually about 30 seconds later he hit a free over from 50 yards out, so for a player that's only 18 years of age, like the lads didn't do anything illegal there, they were just playing the game yeah. hard, yeah. but you know, they knew he was a young player, you know, maybe soften him up a little bit, but it, it didn't work with him and, and fair play to him. It showed a great battle for a young man. You wouldn't want to be feeling too wheezy going out in the first case, would you? You have picked out a clip here, Ger, that we want to look at <coughs> because I think Michael Dyken was also making this point before the break. The difference between the two sides, Clare working hard, Tipper picking off the scores. Clare working really hard, 70% of the play, but they've only got two points in play. Tip have got five points to play. Now this is how to do it. Catch the ball out, Corbett. Gone away from, the only time he got away from Brian Quinn, ball over the bar. Now the other side, they are getting the ball, they're full string with it, they're not, no direct play for them, or no fast goals for them. 
that's what you have to do in the Munster Championship. One touch is all you get. Once you get that break, you must put it over the bar. And you just wonder if Clare can keep up the intensity yeah. that they've had in the first sure. half. That's the big question facing into the second half now. So a goal chance at each side. Perhaps the best one went to tip in that first half, Michael Dignett. Could have, should have possibly put this in the net. Yeah, um, I think it was La 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 or no, young Owen Kelly again. Come on, lovely hand pass out. I think maybe Eddie Henry could have struck that from the ground, but Brian Lohan used a bit of experience. Gave him a little pull back. You know, I can't blame him for that. And Owen Kelly comes on to it, a rocket and just inches wide, you know. Um, I don't think Owen Kelly did anything wrong there, but, you know, um, very good chance, ground ball like that, impossible to save from that distance, and they certainly look at it as a, as, a, as a missed chance. Well, I suppose all you can do is take a pot it and see what happens yeah, after yeah, that. Did. Down the other end, I was mentioning, Claire had a chance as well, Ger. We talk so much of the Sunday game about Brendan Cummins, what a wonderful goalkeeper he is, but really, for the, that flash instinctive... He's just a fantastic goalkeeper, and you see, everybody thinks his weakness is on his left-hand side, and that's what Colin Lynch did here. Now, Lynch is absolutely magnificent today. Here he appears as a support man outside David Ford. Out of nowhere comes Lynch, in space, nobody on him. He goes to the 21-yard line, he goes to his left, and with one hand, he flicks the ball away. He, he truly is a magnificent goalie. Now, Lynch is a bit far out, but it's worth having a go at it, especially to come as his right hand, uh, left hand side, yeah. where he gets that one hand, blocks it. Look at all the saves he's made. In the last two yeah, games no. with Clare, yeah. he has made at least six outstanding saves that, sure. that, that has saved Tipperary. And that, that has been a crucial save because I think if Clare got that goal ahead, mm. they, they would really, and the game would open up. Yes. Clare would really start to, to, to sail and the game would open up. But it was a vital save at a vital time. He's some goalkeeper. Oh, he certainly is. Chances for goals in the second half. Who can get the goal? Here, during the second 35 minutes. That's David Ford there. This is Dickie Murphy, the official from Wexford, getting the second half underway. Clare won the three of the last five matches involving these counties and that ball goes in there and the excellent Philip Marr hand passing it out into space towards John Carroll Marr really had an outstanding first half that's Barry Murphy angling this one across towards David Ford scoring chance here and he puts it over the bar David Ford a second point for him Good start for Clare there. John Carr was a bit casual when he got a pass out from Philip Marr. Now Tip finds himself down a point. Perfect start for Clare. And a good start there for the second half by David Ford. Referees uh, calling across Brian O'Mara and David Hoy. Something again that happened off the ball. Nothing thankfully too serious. It's going to be a puck out for Brendan Cummins. This time, trying to target Brian O'Mara. Here's Paul Kelly. Inside towards Declan Ryan and winning that first ball that uh, came in between Lowen and Ryan was the tall number three, the current Clare captain. Fouled a uh, free out. Here was Brian Lowen coming out there. Referee says he was held back by Declan Ryan. Here comes Colin Lynch, firing in another one, but uh, this time he fires it to the left-hand side. Conor Gleeson has discarded the black helmet he was wearing for the opening 35 minutes. Remember, he's marking Ollie Baker. Down through the middle towards Eddie Enright and Sean McMahon who comes steaming out of here once again out to Alan Markham dragged back John Carroll fouling free to Clare Jerry, you're going to see if Clare go two finds up here I expect John Leahy to be soon coming on because he, you cannot hold a talent like that on the line I don't remember the figure exactly from